oh man, are we right on time or what? <laughs> Eight o'clock exactly. We're already streaming. Uh, so here, let me fix this up because you just never know what it's going to look like. I try to get this all set up beforehand, but sometimes you just never know. So um, you can hear me, Sahaj? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Let's get this party started. <sighs> what is this, episode 139? Do, do we know? Let me see. I could check real quick. Let's do this. Because I don't want to say the wrong thing while we're recording, right? But we already are. So episode last time was 138. This is 139. All right. Welcome, everyone, to 96 Boards Open Hours, sponsored by Lenaro. My name is Robert Wolf, 96 Boards Community Manager, and you are watching episode 139 on March 7th, 2019. Today, we do not have a, let's just say, traditional interview-based episode planned. We have instead, in fact, for the last couple episodes, been taking this time to gather ourselves and have some fun with our own tech. And so um, Sahaj is joining us to talk to us and to show us a bunch of really cool stuff on the Oxalis board, which is the new enterprise, which is the new enterprise 96 boards based on the NXP Layerscape LS 1012A. And in fact, if you have been paying attention to open hours at all for the last few weeks, uh, we have released, uh, not only did we interview the folks from NXP, ARM, Sysstart, and Aero Electronics about this board on Valentine's Day last month, but we also released a nice little promotional video around this board as well. We got everyone in. We made this kind of semi-edited version uh, of, a, of a video that talks about the entire board, the process, and of course, the technology uh, behind ARM architecture and the 96 boards um, spec. So it was very interesting, very fun. And I would encourage everyone, if you have some time to go check these out. Now, Sahaj, just kind of like before we break into your demo and before we go into all this other kind of stuff, you just never know who's watching. Best just kind of introduce yourself again, and um, and then we can kind of go into some questions that I have for you. So hello, everyone. My name is Sahaj, and I work as an application engineer at 96 Boards. Uh, most of my work is based on doing demos and projects on the boards that we have and help with the launch. Sometimes we do some launch videos and stuff. Uh, uh, so I do kind of co-produce that along with Robert. And yeah, so I do have a very interesting demo with the Oxalis. As you can see, it's, a part of it is covered up. So that's a surprise that I'll lift the cover uh, and hopefully it will be dramatic enough. Uh, and then we have the uh, Oxalis uh, running on this end. So uh, yeah. So so Sahaj, before we go into um, your demo, at which I'm told will take up a, a little bit of time, right? Um, yeah, hopefully. Let's, let's talk about the board itself. For, for a second. So um, I kind of want to go down some of this uh, the spec sheet of it and talk about CPU, RAM, all that kind of good stuff. So, so on board, you have a Cortex A53. And again, I mentioned the SOC is an NXP Layerscape LS1012A. Um, if you want to learn more about this chip, you know, you can go and listen to one of the representatives from NXP who joined us in one of the open hours episodes a couple weeks ago. Um, PMU NXP VR5100. Uh, storage, it has 64 megabytes of SPI flash for bootloader, um, and then a micro SD card slot plus a SATA port. So that's pretty nice, right? I mean, this is perfect for setting up, you know, little micro servers or, um, you know, full blown servers, whatever you want to do, you can do all sorts of crazy networking stuff with this. Uh, and then it has ethernet port, uh, USBs, um, expansion interfaces, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, I mean, like we can kind of go down the list uh, but all of this, of course, complies with the 96 boards enterprise edition specification. And that's kind of one of the beauties about it is that, you know, bringing this board into the 96 boards ecosystem, you've heard me say it a million times, you adopt the community and everything else that's with it that comes with it. So um, let's see, Sahaj, maybe let me uh, let me go back to you now. And what I want to do is you have that board there, but you can't really can, can you bring the camera closer to just kind of like, I guess uh... we can. I'll spotlight it. It's okay. Yeah. Let me spotlight it real quick so we can just take a live view. I don't have one of these boards yet. Let's see. Spotlight view. 
Interesting. Yeah, so this, another there's also, yeah, uh, I was just saying there's already a question on YouTube uh, from A13 Tech, and I know this guy over on Twitter, uh, pretty interesting dude. So um, every, everything will be answered. He was asking, wasn't this board running the 5.0 kernel? So that's like part of the demo. We'll, we'll talk about that. So we'll come to that later in a bit. Yeah, so, and I mean, the answer is yes. Uh, if you go to the video I shared, um, if you go to the video I shared right above there, A13 Tech, um, that's the one where it's on open hours. And if you fast forward to, I'm not sure, like towards the end, I think it's minute one hour and 24, one hour 24, you'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to see the, the um, oh my goodness, uh, Mani, one of our other engineers running this demo and showing the, the 5.0. Great. Um, yo, 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 one last thing. Sorry, Sahaj. I wanted you to point out, since we have it still spotlighted, um, yep. can you just point out where the little psalm is? Because this board is so, unique also in that it has a psalm. So, so this part right there, where you can see four screw holes, that's the psalm. And like once after this demo, I'll disassemble and maybe show it uh, from other angles. So you'll be able to see it's on two connectors, which look very similar to the high speed connector we have on CE boards. So there's two of them and it sits right on top. Nice, all right. So yeah, I guess uh, I'll, let, I'll let you take it away now since we're gonna be showing the demo. Cool, so um, just as like a preface to this demo, uh, this is sort of, this is something I did with the board which the board really isn't meant to do. Uh, it's an edge, uh, like kind of a board that you will keep always online. It has two Ethernet ports, so a lot of uh, networking stuff can be done. It has a SATA on board. So you can see uh, like a NAS kind of a situation there. But uh, I did something different with it uh, bec because I wanted to play with it. So ta-da, I, um, <laughs> I, I attached a GPU to it and it's kind of working and it's really cool because the board has a mini PCIe slot at the bottom. So we'll, we'll also take a look at the setup in a second uh, as to how I got that uh, GPU to connect to that mini PCIe slot. Um, this is running Mani's uh, 5.0 kernel and Mani's changes uh, and support should be in the 5.1 release of the mainline kernel. So you'll just be able to pick that up and uh, run on that. So what I am going to do now is I'm not sharing my screen right now because this is all what Mani has already well, gone through. Well, can you can you real quick, Saj, can, can you kind of just point out what we're looking at on, on the on your table? Like right, just so, every yeah, yeah, sure. Um, this is the HD4350, really old. This is a spare GPU I had. So it's a really old uh, AMD or ATI okay. GPU uh, to be precise. Um, the board and the GPU are connected to an external power supply. Uh, like it's a PC power supply and I hacked it to like just work out of a PC. And we have the seven inch uh, HDMI display, which is, which is I think called the, it's on Arrow as well. It's called the Link Sprite display. And we kind of officially support this. Uh, you'll, you can see it along with Dragon Boards a lot of the time, uh, but yeah. Uh, just an HDMI display output from the graphic card itself. And then the graphic card is connected to the uh, Oxalis board. So what I'll do is boot the board, which will take a few seconds because it's loading uh, around about 280 megabytes of uh, RAM disk essentially onto the RAM. So I'm not directly uh, running Debian on it. It's a Yocto build uh, right now, uh, which I am planning to move to a proper Debian build. So if everything goes to plan, you should see a cursor kind of a thing appear. The Yep, the display just activated and there we go. So it's sadly not very clear on the stream, but uh, that is the login uh, prompt from over graphic cards, HDMI display from the uh, Oxalis. And that is actually pretty cool. So I'll just log into it. Uh, and I know not a lot is visible, so I'll, I'll run uh, the message and you can see like text just flowing through it. And um, yeah, there you go. So I got it to work this much like last night. Uh, apart from that, if you try to like 
run X term or something with like a bit more um, you know, visual aspect to it. Uh, so that like, um, like a GUI, for example. So I'll run X init X or uh, sorry, X init X term. And that displays an X term apparently, it doesn't crash this time. So we have graphical <laughs> display on it. So I'm going to be real and this is the first time this has happened. Uh, it usually crashes at this point. So it, it may be just managed to do it, uh, which is interesting. It's kind of finicky right now. I was, I was trying to get it stable, but it wasn't. But there is a graphical display there. Uh, let's try to pull, push it a bit more. So let's go GLX gears, is it? But so why why would why would the uh, why would this be causing it to crash? Is it just um, yeah, there is there's some reason. Uh, I think it's supposed to do with running it on an ARM architecture. Um, in all of the builds that we have, I had gone through build root Yocto. Uh, everyone had the either uh, Mesa's um, support for uh, ATI cards disabled uh, or it was Mesa's, um, or it was the XF86 uh, XORG video driver for ATI cards disabled for other architecture uh, other than like x86 and ARM. Uh, again, graphic cards aren't something that have been tested a lot with ARM. A lot of uh, like the developer box comes with the new view graphic card or the NVIDIA graphic card running the open source driver, but the developer box you'd have to understand is a very different beast. Um, it is running like a full SVBA compliant uh, bootloader. Uh, so that's a bit more different than that. So let's try it once again. I think I typed the wrong um, command. Um, yeah, it just says can't get some buffer. Uh, GLMAF2. Yeah, can't initialize canvas. Some something to do with, um, yeah. I, I'll have to debug that a bit more. So we can't get 3D graphics right now, but I'm happy that I was able to at least get X term on and running. That means X org is working. Uh, so uh, if you cross your fingers, uh, maybe in the next build, I'll like try to have a uh, full desktop uh, working on there. So that was the software side of things. Uh, and at this point, if anyone has questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. And so Guillermo's asking for the arrow link to the board. Um, Guillermo, I can share this link right here. This is to the 96 boards page. And then on the 96 boards page, you'll have the link to arrow, the links to uh, the arrow announcement, I believe, and to the SysStart page. So you can kind of see all of the pages there in one place. Hey, thanks. Yeah, did you have any questions for Sahaj? Uh, not, not at this time. Oh, Mani raised his hand. <laughs> Mani's, Mani's uh, in the attendee player area, so maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bring Mani into the panelist. Yeah, I'm not the co-host, so I can't do that right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do have a question. Uh, what is the graphic card you are attaching to the world? Uh, it's 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 the HD four thousand series uh, with HD forty five thirty. Is it? Yep. Uh, ATI Radeon uh, HD forty five thirty. I'll just drop in a link, a very old link, but it's a very old graphic card to be honest. It's like five hundred and twelve megabytes of RAM, and I think the reason why the only reason I can think why X term worked right now is because I'm running it on a smaller display. Uh, that's the only thing I changed when I was testing it earlier. I was using a, like a full size 1080p display. Now this uh, other question probably more for money, but uh, is the driver running on the board specific for the card or any graphic card will be attended by this driver? So we are running on Mesa. Uh, and there are kind of like three levels of driver that you need to run what I'm running right now. First, you have the kernel DRM driver. And uh, uh, that is again, graphic card specific. 
Uh, so you need to just enable that in the kernel and you have ATI, you have for NVIDIA, if you enable both of these, it will automatically detect which, which card there is and load it up. Um, and then you have the Mesa driver that's for uh, OpenGL stuff. Uh, that is the bit that is, isn't quite running right now. And uh, then that is also device specific. And then you have device specific drivers for from Xorg to run the Windows, the, the windowing manager and the Xorg application like Xstorm uh, and stuff like that. So three levels of drivers that you really need to work. I think right now two of them are working fine and Mesa is the one that's uh, kind of finicky. Okay, yeah, cool. So, um, there's, so there's a question. There's a question in YouTube right now from from again A13 uh, Tech, and he's asking, "Can it run Crisis?" <laughs> uh, yeah, for those who don't know on the call, "Can it run Crisis" is a long, long going joke uh, in the in the gaming community, but uh, not right now. Sadly, uh, I would have seen <laughs> say said yes otherwise, but maybe a bit bit more work put into it. It will one day. Uh, Hey, Sahaj. Yeah. So uh, do you know uh, the limitation or do you know the requirement for the SOC uh, to interface this kind of graphics card? Do you know any kind of requirement for that? Because the reason why I'm asking is that you can't actually connect this same graphics card to Rock 960. So that SOC has some sort of limitations for connecting the external graphics card via PCIe. So, I'm not... but I'm not sure what's the exact requirement. You know that? Even I'm not sure, that's why I was surprised this was working, but apparently with this SOC, NX, NXP did something right that it did. I have tried this over and over again with the popular, and again, I think there was some SOC limitation. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I'd have to try why it won't work with ROC 960. Uh, have, you, have you tried it or have you seen it somewhere? Mentioned. No, so uh, during one of the video, um, I think it was uh, Hong Kong. During the Hong Kong Connect, uh, Tom QB was uh, saying that the ROC 9, I mean, the ROC 33999 SOC has some limitations, which prohibits it from connecting any external GPU. Hmm. So, yeah. it, so, so, but the, but the, the RK3399, that, that chipset's used in a lot of like different, Laptops and Chromebooks, isn't it? Especially Chromebook. Yeah, I mean, but then they use the, graphics cards. You... No, they use the internal GPU. Yeah, the, oh, the, talking about the external graphics card connected using PCIe. Yeah. Yeah. PCIe is complex, so there probably might be something. I'll have to read into it, and I'll probably will uh, now because I have at least something working on my end. Um, to, to, to be honest, the answer on my end is I don't really know at this moment. Uh, Okay. No the issues. one limitation. So one more thing. People... Can you just uh, show the bottom set of the board? Yeah, I will. Let me just disconnect everything, uh, and I'll, I'll come to the setup. But the one limitation that people might worry worry about is, oh, the um, the PCI lane is only X1 and not X3. It's PCI2. Well, the thing with PCI is everything is backwards compatible. So you can have a PCI3 X16 card run on a PCI2 X1 slot just as fine. It will just be a bit slower. So that is one kind of limitation people really think about a lot, but that's not really a limitation. But inside the PCIe spec and the driver bits itself, there are certain stuff that can um, that can be problematic. Um, yeah, let me just plug everything off in quickly, and I'll come back and show the uh, show the hardware itself. Yeah, so Mani, maybe um, maybe while we're waiting for Sahaj to do that, are you still there? Yep. Maybe you can Sorry, give I'm us just a little bit of dinner. You're, oh, you're having your dinner? Yeah. It's, what are you eating? <laughs> I'm <laughs> eating dosa. That's, that's my routine. <laughs> oh, man. I remember... Uh, when I went to India, sorry, Guillermo, I'm, I'm going to have to just mute you because you get the, there's, for some reason, your microphone has a feedback to it. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so uh, I remember when I went to India, it was in Mumbai, uh, I had a Bao Baji. You, are you familiar with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, but man. it's not the, uh, I mean, it's actually the North Indian thing. <laughs> Oh, that's a North Indian thing? But Mumbai isn't Mumbai North isn't India. India. 
Mumbai yeah. is very like a lot of people from a lot of people uh, places come there so it's kind of I, i'd say it's kind of like bangalore and Bom- mumbai are uh, a place where you will find food from all over india yeah and, pav bhaji yeah. is so popular across india but yeah in i mean the I mean, most part of india we don't <laughs> that's, yeah that's kind of true with dosa as well right i mean even i can go yeah. and get some and even i know how to make that even yeah, if it it's not, not, not good at all but yeah it reminds me of the uh of the american sloppy joe i don't know if anyone's familiar with that i've heard about it i've never really had it or seen how do you spell person. how do you spell pao paji i think it's usually p a o and b h a j i i found it this is pao paji right here I don't know it's like a tech 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 gone indian food but man is it delicious it's like right there so freaking good and you take the bread and the bread are so soft and like slathered in butter and then you like grab the the that's the pao and then the paji is the other stuff and you grab it up and you and you eat it so like a sloppy joe looks like this sloppy joe that's a sloppy joe but this has a lot of meat right so somewhat oh, yeah. similar you have the bread and like kind of like this mush Yeah. All right, that's a, sorry. I I haven't had breakfast or dinner so and now my mouth mouth is all watery. I'm so hungry. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. So what I what what I wanted to do, you haven't unplugged everything yet, have you? Uh I have unplugged so I can right now uh turn everything around and show. Okay. Um so I hope you guys can still hear me. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. uh so this is the display and i'll just connect that so this is the board itself and you have the som right here and if i put it at an angle you can see the connector for the som down there and at the back uh this is the mini pcie slot and that's how i'm connecting it and this is a USB micro B type three so port, uh, uh, no USB mini B uh, type three port, uh, and this is a very unique one. Uh, it has uh, around twice the number of USB two pins, or twice or thrice the number of USB two pins. So those are just enough to get the PCI X one lanes from here uh, onto an external card, uh, which is this one. uh and then that distribute distributes the x1 uh lanes to the x16 slot so only the top part of the slot is populated with pcie and then you can pump your um graphic card on there it has external power from the power supply so you your graphic card doesn't really draw any power from the auxiliaries um and the mini pcie is mostly meant for uh networking like wifi or bluetooth of cards and stuff like that but uh the real reason why things like this came into play was with a lot of uh mining rigs relying on gpu to work so people would have extremely lo- large uh motherboards that will have multiple x1 slots or mini pci slots and then everyone would just connect 20 to or 30 graphic cards to like one cpu uh, and because it's the mining process isn't uh cpu intensive and doesn't require a lot of bandwidth it just requires the raw processing power of the gpu uh it was very efficient at that time um and the mini pc spec interestingly also has uh an actual usb 2 port and on it so i have another converter here uh and that has that usb broken out as well as an x1 slot broken out and this is the a uh, mini pci part that connects to the board and yeah so that is kind of about it uh, on the auxiliary aux- aux- itself we have two gigabit ports and an, and the side set up port that come directly from the sock and uh, i can also remove the sock and show you all and there it is from the bottom there is your ram 
a gigabyte of RAM and then a TPM security chip right there. And that's the SOC. Nice. Let's go back to, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, and uh, again, for those of you who would like to go explore more about the Oxalis, you can go to 96ports.org forward slash product forward slash Oxalis. And then there you'll have access to all of the different links like um, like uh, Arrow and, oh, hey, John Mark. Hey, what's up? Oh my goodness, I haven't seen you in so long. How are you? Oh, can you not hear us? Oh, you can, can you hear us or you, we just can't hear you? Hello? Okay, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, there you go, I hear you. <laughs> Yeah, today I have I have a computer with a with a video, so <laughs> and I have a friend of mine <laughs> close to me. So, oh, nice, I, nice. I, I I I I meet you every every week, but I don't have the video usually. So, gotcha. It's been a long time, man. How, how's life? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. But are yeah. you registering now? Are we what? Are you registering? Re registering like for what? I mean, recording. are you videotaping? Recording. Oh yeah, yeah, we're recording. Yeah, yeah, we're oh, recording. Let's let's talk Sah Sahaj and yourself then. <laughs> oh okay, yeah, <laughs> no worries. Good to see you though. Um, yeah, I, I hear I hear rumors maybe that we will be doing a connect eventually one time in Germany uh, sometime soon. So uh, that'll oh, bring us closer to your your area. Yeah, well then I might come. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, good, good to, good to see you, Don Mark. Yep. Bye. Hello, Sar Sahaj. Hey. Yeah. So, um, John Mark, John Mark has been joining us uh, along with several other people in the call here, but John Mark has been joining us since the beginning pretty much. And, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of fun having him on the call, but we used to do a thing called the John Mark minute. And, uh, we, we since, <laughs> we since stopped doing that, but, um, uh, yeah, maybe one day we'll bring it back. We'll see. Cool. So Sahaj, you were talking about, uh, you were talking about, um, the Oxalis. And so is there any other things that maybe you plan on working on this? I'd love to see, you know, an actual project. I don't know if we have any published yeah. yet on the 96 boards org or on Hackster. Yeah, no, not yet. But yeah, I, I really want to do a project that is really meant for Oxalis. Like this was an experiment. Oxalis isn't really supposed to do this. It's not like a, a gaming desktop or something like that. But, you know, uh, I, I'd want to like to work on a ARM-based gaming de desktop, but Oxalis's purpose is uh, on the networking and storage side of things from what it seems. So maybe uh, a very complicated or you know a complex NAS uh, that has a lot of functionality or um, like a I IoT hub, something along those lines I'd like to do uh, soon with the board. Nice, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it would be uh, well-received because there really isn't much going on, I would say, out there with the 96 boards enterprise side of things. And so, you know, we get some projects out there. Uh, I, would, I would hope that people would be interested in, in checking them out. Um, all right, cool. Well, I mean, if that's the last thing we're going to talk about with the Oxalis, unless anyone else has any questions, of course, you can interrupt us. Um, we have a few minutes left on the broadcast. I wanted to talk about a couple other things, especially since I noticed some updates to the Aero 96 boards campaign page. So Sahaj, if you don't have anything else, then we can kind of jump ship there if that's okay. Yeah, we are good. Just wanted to say uh, this, the board was a part of a lot that I just got from Arrow. So we have two more boards and you know, expect a lot more content on that. Uh, I'm also editing the unboxing for all of these boards right now. Uh, so yeah, maybe in the coming weeks, weeks or a bunch more videos. Nice, yeah, the 96 boards YouTube, it's one of our big things this, this year. So 2019, um, I mean, so when I first got a hold of the YouTube, I think it, we were at like 300 and something subscribers. That That's where, when I started a couple of years ago. Now we're at about 2,400, two years, 2,400 subscribers. I don't know if that's a good outcome. I would probably say no. Uh, we, you know, I, I think that we should probably be beefing it up a little more. We've only done the open hours episodes every week. It's not like we've really, you know, pushed the envelope. And so now uh, with Sahaj's help and of course the help of our partners, we're really going to start pushing this YouTube um, YouTube channel, and so with everyone's help, hopefully as well, uh, the community we can get 
a nice, healthy, and fun, and engaging, and educational, and technical YouTube channel. So that's kind of our goal. We want to make sure that you know people are having fun and and uh, learning when they watch our our stuff. So Zahaj has been putting together a lot of videos. We've been meeting with our partners, putting together promo videos, and we have all sorts of stuff scheduled for the rest of 2019. Boom. Now, uh, talking about uh, moving over to this next thing is uh, Arrow. I mentioned this a few episodes ago, and I've mentioned it a couple times. Arrow launched a really cool 96 boards campaign page. So now if you think about it, like, you know, you want to create a product or you want to prototype something, you have an idea and you want to bring it to life, right? There really is a whole bunch of options you have out there. I mean, like you can go start exploring all the different single board computers, uh, microcontroller units, just boards out the yin yang. There's so many different boards out there. Arrow wanted to kind of put together a page that allows people to land there and have access to all the developer tools that they need. And they are using 96 boards as their primary vessel for this particular initiative and for this campaign. So that being said, you land on this page, you choose the 96 boards you want to use, you choose your development tools. And then from there, you can basically bring your product up, right? So prototyping to product, development for, to prototyping to product. And that's kind of the whole mission. So I'm going to share my screen. And I want to share this with you. That's my busy, busy desktop. And this is the Palpaji we were looking at earlier. All right. So this is the Arrow campaign page, or the Arrow, I should say, Arrow 96 boards campaign page. As you can see, I, I'm moving the little, little cameras here around. But so here's the 96 boards logo. Very nice. Um, 96 boards from Arrow, discover the 96 boards community. And then this is essentially the information that you'll find on the 96 boards about page. So this just kind of lets you know that 96 boards is an SOC agnostic specification. And for those of you who not, are not really familiar with that, uh, that basically means that you're gonna develop or you can develop on one SOC one day and then move your development to another SOC another day. I know, uh, you know it's not necessarily so straightforward as I'm making it sound, but the goal is um, over, you know, time to make this transition and this, you know, unification more complete. Uh, we are still working on the software story. The hardware story is somewhat set, but we're still working on the software story. And this is something that doesn't come easy, something that takes a long time and takes a lot of effort and a lot of human resources to make happen. And uh, so this is uh, and this is something that we, we are focusing on, of course, again, as well this year. So there's many parallels going on in the 96 boards world. So diving down here, you'll see a lot of, I got a little button here. So someone posted in the chat, let's see. Um, I'll, I'll take this, I'll take this, uh, this question before I dive into this. So Guillermo was asking why put a picture of a boar with twisted pins any subliminal message? <laughs> where where is that coming from? Where's the boar with twisted pins? Is I'm it wondering. on the top of the page? Oh, is there? Or, yeah, I see it, like on the corner, the bottom corner. I'm trying to find it because. No, no, no. On on like behind the text, the the main photo behind the text. Oh, I still don't see it. Oh, oh, I see this one right here. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a pretty strange choice. You know what's funny is I think that is actually the board I have on my board here, because I was. No, never mind. It's not. Yeah, maybe we should bring that up. <laughs> I, I I thought you were going to be talking about an emoji or something like a board with twisted pins. Yeah, good 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 eye. I I had not even noticed them. But not only that, it's not only two twisted pins. One of them is completely broken off. So, so good eye. Let's let's bring that up to Arrow. Look at that Com community community at work. Someone was angry. Yeah. So, um, so let's let's dive back into this. Um, looking at looking at as we scroll down here. So again, we're at the campaign page for ninety six boards on Arrow, and um. If you scroll down, you'll see that all of these different partners are involved in this initiative. Let's call it, let's, let's say 
uh, you want to have a camera board, right? Well, there are companies that specialize in building cameras. They come to Aero. Aero recommends 96 boards as a nice developer platform. And so you end up getting camera boards like the one that D3 Engineering made. Um, Novtech, who builds some very nice baseboards like the Chameleon 96 and the Meerkat. Seed Studio, who does some of our debugging boards and the sensor board, uh, like, you know, the 96 boards, original sensor board and the UART debug board. And then you have Shiratech, who's done some amazing work with their FPGA board, uh, the Bosch sensor mezzanine, LTE, narrowband IoT board, and then some of the recent new um, IoT extended base boards that they announced at Embedded World. And um, next, Biometrics, which specializes in bioinformatics. So you get, you know, stuff like fingerprint sensors. Now, I'm told that this page is still not up to date. So they're still waiting to get more stuff put onto this page, which is amazing because you're already seeing, I mean, look at that. What is that? 10, 14 boards up here. So 14 boards, and yet they're not even done yet. I was starting to, I was kind of like working on building a slideshow for, do I even have that open? I feel like I want to open it, but I was building a slideshow around the 96 boards that we have currently and the ones that are coming out. And it is just growing so fast that I can't keep up. I mean, we can go to the 96 boards page again and we can kind of see, of course, Arrow isn't going to post boards on their, on their uh, website that, that aren't sold by them, right? But for the most part, they're hitting, they're hitting pretty big because a lot of our line cart is Arrow. And so, uh, you know, you can see right here, what is that? Four, eight, 12, 13, 14. That's 15 uh, baseboards that are already out. Um, three of which are extended. And then I can even look back at my board here and I can see two other baseboards that were never really released. I mean, I guess I should say they were released, but in one case, it was a board that was released internally only. So you could only, they, they released the 96 board so that they could adopt the ecosystem within their own company. And then they, they put out the board for that purpose. And then another board, which never really made it to, to you know, mass market, which was also kind of a similar story, um, but you can still find it around areas, which was the SD eval board, the 600 series uh, chipset from Qualcomm. And I have one of those hanging up here as well. So there's there's uh, quite, a, quite a few things going on. And, and how did I tangent off? How did I tangent off of what we were originally talking about? Um, yeah, so here you can see all in one page, the stock, how much stock for each board is there, um, what's going on with the mezzanines and, and what baseboards are, are here. And then you can visit the different partners that are involved in this and you can find out what other products they're building. So, I mean, like for instance, I know, and we talked to, uh, some of the folks from Next Biometrics, we had them come on to the show. This is the mezzanine. They sent us one. Zahaj has done some demos. They showed us some demos. And then I didn't know that they have 15 other products that are sold by Arrow. I mean, like you could just click their product page and you can see all the different things that they have that they're building. And it looks like, again, view all products. Still trying to figure this out. But look, all these different products that they're building. And, um, this actually, this reminds me of when we were talking to them on our show, you can see that the fingerprint sensor that is included in this mezzanine for development purposes can be purchased here on its own. So uh, that's very cool right there. If you're trying to reduce costs and you want to build a product out of this, that's a perfect example. Develop on the mezzanine and and then move it over to uh, move it over to your product by purchasing a lower cost version of it. And then look right here, maybe this is because I am, uh, maybe this is because I am always looking at 96 board stuff, but there's a dragon board up here and a promo code for new purchase or new members um, getting 12% off of your first purchase. That should be a dragon board. Urduk Salif, cool. So Haj, so um, I think I'm done. I think this was a, let me cancel this screen share real quick, however I do that. Oh man, this is frustrating. How, it won't even let me cancel the screen screen share. 
there might be a little. Oh, here we go. Thing okay, stop share. So I, I'm done. Unless anyone else has anything else to add, any other questions, we can we can call it a day. Um, no? So there's a question on right now on YouTube from A13 okay. Tech. Are standards planned for documentation or driver support to improve quality on the software side? For example, one company pushes out a lot of boards, but it's bad at the software end. Okay, yeah, so so um, our standards plan for documentation. So the, the, the one thing I can say is that 96 boards is trying our best. And you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll even take this to another level. I'll, I'll screen share again to give an example of this. Um, but let me just read the question so that I get everything here. So plan documentation driver support to improve quality on the soft side. For example, when company purchase pushes out a lot of boards, bad uh, software side. So let's give you an example here. I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna open a browser. Let's me. And I'm going to go to 96boards.org. So standardizing is kind of something that, you know, we are trying to focus on big time. It's something that we want people to feel like you mentioned on the soft side of things. On the soft side of things, if you're working on one day, you're working on a dragon board and the next day you're working on a uh, chameleon 96 board. Well, we want you to feel that when you're on the 96 board side of things, we want you to feel somewhat comfortable and familiar with every step of the process as you're working with these boards. Now, granted, you can't attack everything because there's a huge difference. Dragon board is, you know, somewhat similar maker board type deal, ARM-based Cortex A53 chipset, whereas the um, Chameleon is an FPGA chipset. So, so you can't like, you know, unify completely, but for the most part, when it comes to documentation and what you mentioned on the soft side, we try very hard to make this very similar. So let's look at this. If I go to the, to the dragon board page, I'm just opening it in a new tab. And then if I go to the chameleon 96 page and there I'm running the risk right now, because I'm doing this just kind of like ad lib but I'm running the risk of finding things that, that um, are not the same um, because uh, we are always in there fixing things. When you land on here, you'll notice these top tabs. We try to make these as unified as possible. So our partners tell us, for instance, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if you could add a tutorial section or at some point the community says, hey, we've got enough tutorials now for this particular board. Let's create a section for this. Now, when we look at this particular edition, we start to think, okay, well, this was a nice edition. Did it do well? Let's add this to all the other boards. And so one change to one section could, could in essence, trickle down to the other sections. But looking at the kind of uh, parallels here, again, on the left, it's the dragon board. On the right, it's the chameleon. So we have a lot of things here that are still in the works. However, our goal is to unify and create very similar experiences you have all the buy now sections, buy now sections, operating systems, operating systems, middleware SDKs, third party, and more info. Now, you scroll down here, you have same access to the specifications. And then at the bottom, you have access to different accessories, mezzanines, and something that Sahaj is going to be working on in the near future is building out specific kits. So vertical, uh, vertical incentivized kits. So if you want to develop on robotics, we're going to put together specific kits that will tackle that vertical. Uh, similar to kind of what Arrow's doing on their campaign page where they take all of the 96 boards they put into one area. We're going to take a 96 board and we're going to pair it up with, with mezzanines and particular other pieces of hardware that we know work with this board. And then we'll develop full-blown kits and instruction sets for you. So this so far is the same. For the most part, you feel comfortable surfing the dragon board page as you do the chameleon page. But what about documentation? So if we go getting started here, getting started here. Now, the difference between these two pages is that the chameleon 96 takes me directly to a getting started page with all of the stuff. The dragon board 410C has multiple different purchase options. Chameleon, 
only one purchase option. Dragon Board, well, which purchase option did you do? Did you buy the AWS kit, the audio kit, or the basic kit? I bought the basic kit, so I'm gonna go here. But in every case, you land on a very similar set. Set up what will you need out of the box, out of the box. Um, starting the board for your first time, starting the board for your first time. We have a chameleon guide right here that we'll forward you to. And then what's next? And so we kind of take you through these, this process in the same way for every board. If you go to the overarching documentation section, again, this is also very unified. And some boards are gonna have more than others out the door. So Dragon Board has been around for a long time. Dragon Board's been around since 2015. Chameleon has not been around as long as the Dragon Board and thus you're gonna find certain sections that are not populated yet. But at the end of the day, the goal is to have a full-fledged section similar to what we have on the Dragon Board for all of the boards. So here you can go downloads, installation, building from source. You have different instructions for building from source, installation pages where it teaches you how to do it through the different SD card methods or fast boot, downloads, the, the downloads for the different operating systems that we have available both from Lenaro and third party, the getting started section, useful guides. Dragon Board has a bunch of useful guides that have been made. Um, not only that, uh, the Dragon Board family, right, has a bunch of guides at a level above this uh, that apply to the entire Dragon Board family. So again, kind of the benefits of being around for so long and having all of their stuff upstreamed allows people allows people in the community to do a lot of stuff with that. Um, so, I mean, again, we can go back and look at another board and you'll get the exact same feeling. So let's go to products and let's go to Rock, Rock 9, uh, let's go to Rock 960. That's the Rock 960C. So let's go to Rock 960. And here you're gonna get the same feeling, buy now, operating systems, middleware, SDKs, third-party images. These are all things that we're still building out. And then if you go to documentation, um, here you go, installation, downloads, build from source, all the same vibe. So you're gonna get that feeling across the entire ecosystem. And this is what we are really striving to do. Um, one of the unique things about the Rock 960, which I really like, uh, so I went back to the consumer section of the documentation, and here you can see like a uh, dragon board. We have the dragon board family under the dragon board family. You have multiple boards, which eventually the RB3 kit will be added here. But um, if you go to, uh, let's go back to products. Um, something unique and something that we're building out is this whole vertical approach, right? I want to develop for agriculture. I want to develop for manufacturing. I want to develop for robotics. Well along with the ability to go to these boards and go to the kits that Sahaj is building out, we're also going to be adding these things into the parametric searches. So you can then start building your way out. We have all these attributes on the back end right now that we're building out for every board that we have so that you can start saying, I want to build a robotics kit that has this many cores um, with this particular operating system and that, um, and that has these libraries enabled and that does, I don't know, I'm, I've thrown out enough attributes. So you choose these like four or five attributes and then you choose a vertical like robotics and then boom, everything gets bundled in there and you slowly start to, to get to down to the pieces of hardware that will benefit you the most for that particular use case. That's something we're building out. The next thing that we're building out is the vertical section, so uh, where was I? Right here, Rock 960. Rock 960 is part of our AI initiative. So if you go to 96boards.ai, you'll notice we have our, our AI initiative. All of these partners are dedicated to creating an AI experience for you and enabling their board for AI development. And Rock 960 is one of these. Among others, you know, you have the Hikey 970, you have the Ultra 96, you have the Sofon Edge, and maybe more to be added in the future. So when you click on the Rock 960 page, when you click on the Rock 960 here, it takes you to the AI tab on the 96boards.org site. And from the AI tab, you now can start building out your AI experience. And this is, let's call it somewhat new. We're still working out all the kinks. But um, essentially, uh, as soon as our next pull request goes in, you'll have vertical specific sections for each, for each board, each AI board. 
um, and you'll be able to start building out your, your AI demos. Also, we do have AI specific demos that will launch in here as well. Now this allows us to expand not only AI, but other verticals as well. So let's just say that, you know, with the new automotive initiative that 96 Sports is trying to tackle, uh, certain boards might be specifically geared or that we feel or that our partners feel want to specifically be used for the automotive um, initiative. And so we might add an automotive tab. Uh, again, these tabs will feel very similar, one automotive board to the next, one AI board to the next when you're looking at these particular sets, but uh, unifying them across uh, this creates a nice um, experience and hopefully reduces uh, ramp up time for for you, right? So that's that's a big goal. We don't want you to jump from one thing and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, there's a whole different experience. I don't understand what the heck's going on. I got to read all of this stuff all over again, blah, blah, blah. Um, so hopefully that hopefully, long drawn out answer. I hope that clarified it for you. And I hope that makes you a little bit more comfortable when looking at the uh, 96 words ecosystem. We'll go back to the page here. So A13 tech, I hope that helped out. Whew. Um, now, now I think, now I think we're closer to the time where we actually end the show. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I see Attila in the YouTube chat. He says, uh, he says, I hoped, I hope no one will notice ever, <laughs> but I'll fix it. So, so it looks like that, that was noticed. Attila, you got it. All right. So, um, that's about it. Anything else, Sahaj? We good? Yep, looks like we are good. Yeah. All right. Um, let's just do one last reminder. Lenaro Connect is coming up in like three weeks. So uh, if you are interested in, if, if you're late and you're interested in checking it out, you can go to connect.lenaro.org. And on that website, you can find all the different resources you need. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Right at the end of my show, but the coffee is here and it's nice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Got coffee, coffee delivery. All right. That's it. Um, check out Lenaro, connect.lenaro.org. Uh, you know, the, the website has all the information you need. There'll be plenty of resources available to you uh, throughout the event itself. Um, Sahaj and I, as well as hopefully Mani will be joining us, um, even though he's been very camera shy as of late. Uh, we're going to be going around and doing all sorts of really cool uh, interviews and talks and live streams. And uh, for the most part, uh, that entire event is just going to be one big uh, uh, social media splash. That, that's my hope. I just, I just want to just make a whole bunch of stuff and have a whole bunch of fun. Uh, showing everyone what's going on over there. So hopefully you'll join us. You can follow all of these these uh, these streams and videos on the at 96 boards, 96 boards channels. Great, time to turn off. Sahaj, any last words? Yeah, um, thank you everyone for watching. And yeah, we, we'll, we'll make sure we get money on camera. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna follow him around and just like get him on in all sorts of weird camera, camera, We'll take pictures of him, like, you know, like he's like, what, what just, what just happened? But yeah, we'll, we'll find some good ones. All right, okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice, nice day. Turning off the YouTube. Stop the stream by YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for all the good questions.